Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and I've long had an odd dream when it comes to game development, and that is I've always wanted to be able to do it wherever I was in the world. Say I was on the bus, or waiting for the bus, or uh, just waiting in line somewhere, or hell, I'm on the toilet. I want to do some modeling, 3D work, or sculpting. It's never really been there. There's been a couple of applications that have tried. Sculpt123 is probably the preeminent among them, but there is finally a tool here that has done everything I have ever wanted to see, and that is what you see in front of you. And this is not a desktop application you're seeing. That's why it's actually a little blurrier than it is in reality. What you're seeing is a screen capture of my phone. Now, I have a OnePlus 7T, if you're wondering in terms of what kind of performance we're seeing here, but a OnePlus 7T unfortunately doesn't use uh, a 19 1920 by 1080p resolution. That's why you're seeing bars at the top and bottom. But this is a sculpting application called Nomad, and it allows you to basically do 3D work wherever you want. And it does it really, really well. So you start off a lot like you would with ZBrush or Blender. Start off with a high um, resolution display like this, and we could go ahead and start layering some clay in there, like so. And we've got uh, symmetry going on. So if I go over to the other side, you can see there we go. So we've got nice symmetry going on here. You can navigate around in the world really simply. One finger off of your model does a rotate. Two fingers in and out, pinch to zoom like you would expect. And then two fingers off your surface is a pan. It's a really intuitive way to work. And in all honesty, this 3D application does everything I would expect. Now this is commercial software. What you're seeing right now is limited in functionality. Basically I can't export and oddly enough, I have limited undos. I can only do one layer of undo, which is a little weird. Um, but especially because frankly, the, the inability to export makes it kind of useless unless you pay for it anyways. But as you can download it, check it out, see if it works great on your device. This one is available for iOS and Android. And like I said, it does pretty much everything I need in a 3D modeling tool, and it does it well. So click this little guy in the top right corner, that um, wrench and screwdriver, and you can see all of the various different brushes available. So we've got things like a flatten brush, and you see right there, we're flattening down. So if you're making a solid surface, you want hard edges, you can use that brush as you saw it in action there. As you can see, the performance is very nice. If we start wanting new geometry, I can start layering on more clay, and we can start building out our model like so. If you, By the way, if you don't want symmetry, uh, you can go in over here and you can turn symmetry off at any particular time. You've also got control over your brush right here. And then these guys up here are device dependent. So you've got, it's like for example, here, we've got control over how our brush works, snapping, snoop. You got tons of control, control over the fall off of your de device. And the cool thing is if you have a pen, like an Apple Pencil or an S Pen on your Samsung phone, it is pressure sensitive as well. As you can see here, we've got... Uh, Painting enabled in here as well. So you can see here you've got uh, different materials you can create. So we got this goldish material pre made, or we can create our own full PBR workflow. So this is a highly uh, metal gold that we've got going on. And I should be in a paint mode. So let's go over here, make sure that we're in paint mode. And there you can see full painting on your device. Once again, the performance here is great. And then we got some tools over. So if I want to smudge, the painted area into the not painted area, we can blend two things together. Uh, you've got all of the stuff that you would expect, pinch, nudge, inflate, crease, uh, set, you can mask certain areas to be excluded or not excluded in the brushes you're working on. Um, we've got a couple different options for workflow. So, uh, so you're rendering over here right now, we are using a PBR workflow and I can set the environment map in the background. I don't know if I've got different I could load up, yeah, there we go. So we can switch out different environment maps. And there you can see the results of that HDRI map on our model in action. Again, any of the jagginess you see here is because I'm screen capturing from my phone. That does not exist on the actual device. Um, we've also got control. If I go back in here, we can switch out to a matte cap approach. So if you'd rather have like a flat lighting without the PBR, oh, I'm in mask mode still. That's my problem. Anyway, so you've got that option right there. So I actually like working in PBR a bit better because then you get like that nice shiny look if you want it. Uh, I could unmask that area I was just working on. There we go, unmask everything I'm doing. And uh, then we got, again, various different brushes. As you can see, the performance is really good, at least on this, this machine. Now a OnePlus 7T is, it's a decently modern chip. So you're gonna, if you're in a, if this generation or late last generation's phone, your performance should be fine. I tried this on my um, two-year-old Razer uh, 2, which has a 765 chip in it. It, again, runs just fine as well. I, I do find that, really, this is just a nice way to sculpt, to be honest. If, if you're looking for a way to 
you know, work on a model when you're on the road. This is the best option out there by a fair degree, to be honest. So again, you got camera controls going on. You have texturing support. You've got your traditional 3D widgets for scaling, uh, rotating, and so on. By the way, you can also create multiple objects. So I could create a plane or, or another um, shape in here. So for example, if I wanted another sphere, I could create it like so, like that. So you can have multiple shape objects in your scene. Uh, when you're done, if you own the full thing, you can come on up here and you can export as GLTF, OBJ, or STL files. So STL, you probably use if you were going to do some 3D printing. OBJ is for static meshes, works in just about every single game engine out there. And then GLTF, if you can use it, generally is your path of least resistance because it enables you to have full texture support and things just work. And GLTF is getting progressively more supported everywhere. Uh, so it's kind of just an impressive application, to be honest. It, it, it works well. The form factors are there. I think layers are, yeah, layers are unavailable in the um, in the uh, demo, I believe, as well. But you got just a ton of control and configure or configuration over everything you're doing. You've got control over how your finger works. You can work finger and stylus. Uh, you can have it, uh, the button, what the button is going to do. Uh, you just got you got a ton of control available here. You got a little bit of uh, quick camera snapping controls down here. Um, and then here is your full undo history if you have the full thing going on. You've got some more settings down here as well to control uh, how, the, how it handles on your particular device. And then, yeah, so that's about it. So this one again is a trial only. Uh, you can actually export out an image as well. Um, if, if you buy the full thing again, it, it's about 15 bucks US to pick this guy up if you are interested. And then the cool thing here is there I am now in, uh, what is that, portrait? Yeah, in portrait mode. Uh, the UI scales to fit, everything works, got nice controls down the side. I actually prefer using this mode myself because it just it, it's more natural in my hand. And to be honest, just working like this is, so let's just scroll this. So this is a, oh wait, how do I get out? All right, here. My giz no, I messed something up. I don't know how to get those back now. All right, anyways, it's a uh, it's just a nice shape and form factor. You can work either way, whichever way you want. And you notice the UI is accommodating what you are doing. Uh, I I don't know. I, I I also again am really into this stuff. I know generally mobile game dev tools don't do as well on this channel as I particularly am interested in, but this is an area I am interested in. So whenever I find something cool like this, this guy was recommended on by a Discord user, by the way, thank you for the recommendation. Uh, whenever I see something I, I really think is cool, I share it with you, and this is just one of those examples. So if you're interested in learning a bit more, let me just go ahead and shut down my casting here. Go away. Uh, you can learn more here on their website, nomadsculpt.com. You see here some of the uh, the available features here. Clay, crease, trim, smooth, mask, many other brushes, customizing your strokes, uh, fall off, alpha, other options. You've got matte cap or PBR based rendering, uh, vertex painting and roughness, uh, metalness control when you're using PBR materials, multi-resolution sculpting, voxel uniform remeshing, along with uh, subtractive booleans, dynamic topology to refine uh, Refine locally your mesh, uh, robust layers that support topology change, the inter inter uh, intuitive interface designed from the ground up for mobile, and it really is, and that's kind of the nice thing. One of the things I've always wanted was Blender on mobile, but I just don't think the interface would work that well. And I know with Blender 2.8, they kind of moved towards that approach, and I think we will see it eventually. But really, a sculpting application like this that was designed from day one to be mobile, it works quite well, and then the key thing is, if you've got the full version, you can export it out into the formats that actually matter to you. OBJ, supported by pretty much everything out there, and GLTF, which is generally about as seamless export as you can get. And then you can bring it into your game engine or editor of choice. You see a couple things that were done with it. So if you're interested in picking this one up, it is available both on the App Store. Here you can see it's $14.99. I do wish that they would display currency on the screen, but it is available there, $14.99. It is available for the iPhone and the iPad. I think in all honesty, the best platform you could work with on this guy is a tablet with a pen. I, I just think that that workspace or that, that uh, combination is just as good as sculpting in Blender or even ZBrush. Like it's just, you know, it doesn't have quite the level of tooling, but damn, is it close. And the performance is really good. I haven't actually choked it out yet on my phone. So you run it on a modern iPad, that's gonna be impressive for sure.
So it's available on the iPad, but it is also available on Google Play. Now, Google Play, the way they've done it is as a uh, in-app purchases. You got to scroll all the way down here and you'll see it is $19.99. Again, I wish they would show currency on screen because what we are at here is the Canadian store, I believe. It actually doesn't even say in the URL, uh, but I believe it's $14.99 on Android as well. But again, the currency issue can be a little confusing, so I can't quote you for sure. But this price right here is definitely in USD. And I believe on the App Store in Canadian, it's 20 bucks. So you're looking at 15 bucks US, either platform to pick this one up. And wow, uh, you know, if you've got uh, any desire to sculpt and you've got an Apple Pencil or say you're on a Note with an S Pen, uh, and this is just this is kind of the killer app for a Galaxy Note, to be honest. If you want to do some 3D on the go, uh, that, that phone is more than fast enough. And that pressure-sensitive pen and that form factor and that screen size, it, it's, it's almost perfect for mobile game development. So if you're looking for a sculpting tool on the go, definitely consider checking out Nomad Sculpt. It is impressive, at least to me. Let me know what you think about the idea of, you know, doing some work or prototyping on the road. Is it something you're as interested in as I am or nah, not so much? Anyways, let me know. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.